Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Brett here. It is afternoon. Yeah, no, it's still morning. Well, good morning, Pastor Brett here. Uh, just a quick um, look at uh, um, this Bible that I just received in the mail today. Um, this is um, the Newberry Reference Study Bible. Uh, so this is, uh, it's the large type single column edition. Oh, that's why I grabbed it. That's right, because the one that I have upstairs is very, very hard to read. The text is just too small. Um, this says large type single column edition. And then you can see um, the things you can pause and, and expand um, to read the information here. It's featuring a unique textual study helps. Uh, the Newberry Reference Bible is definitely different. It's something that you have to um, read about, learn how to use it in order to use it properly. Um, I never gave it much time, um, but uh, it's a product of John Ritchie, Christian Publications, LTD. And um, it is, and it's a wonderful Bible. It really is. It's just like I said. There's the ISBN right there. All right, and of course, nothing on the back. It tells you what you need to know here um, in the front, and you can see what that's all about right there. Uh, so I'm going to open this up. And we will set this down here. All right, wrapped in plastic. And the Newberry Reference Bible is a genuine leather Bible. It's, um, it's Berkshire, Steve. <laughs> Steve gets a kick out of that. It's oinker, like he says, eh? It's an oinker. Pigskin. Um, let me put my hand on this so that I don't rip this with my knife. I don't want to scratch the gilding. I don't want to cut the pages, really. Not worried about scratches on the gilding. If you're going to use your Bible, use your Bible. Um, I'm not into um, boxes. I don't save my boxes. I don't collect Bibles. I use them. Or I give them away and expect them to be here. See, I just scratched that with my nail trying to tear this off. All right, so this is, uh, it's a beautiful Bible. Let's look at it. This is a different um, cover. The one that I have is um, not genuine leather. This is paste down liner but it's a very thick cut of leather it's a very nice leather it has some hubs but they're not raised they are um, these are called tooled hubs um, and of course they have a slight raise to them but they're not you know raised hubs are raised for a reason and uh, these will not protect this print so this Bible will eventually, that print will eventually be worn out. This is, uh, it's a beautiful, um, I think it's red, it is red under gold, art gilt, so you see that. Um, uh, it has one ribbon marker, nice, neatly placed. Um, and is it neatly installed oh it has two ribbon markers okay so these are just jammed underneath the headband so these are just i mean look at they're all twisted this is not the way that you should do this when you th this this bible was um i had the oh i threw it out okay i had the receipt for it i threw it out uh it wasn't terribly expensive I got this from Ard's Evangelical Bookshop, Ard's Evangelical, and the same thing with this one, just nasty, all wrinkled, and yeah, and, and you remember my video, how I showed 
um, church Bible publishers and the way that they do their ribbons. Um, and not only do they give you the Beresford ribbons, but they, these are silky. They're not rough. Um, they're not bad. They're long enough for the Bible. Um, if you pull it over to the corner, um, you see that you do have enough ribbon to do what you have to do. So it's, they're long enough. Um, they're both just, this is just me. It's a little thing that I have. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, a bit weird when it comes to ribbons, but that's me. Um, and so, as I said, if you're paying the money that you pay for these products, you want them to be what you expect them to be, right? So here you go, Holy Bible. Um, it's arranged um, so as to give as far as possible the accuracy, precision, and certainty of the original Hebrew and Greek languages. On the page of the authorized version, by means of simple and appropriate signs with, and with the divine titles as, as, what's that say? Oh, distinguished. Wow, that's, that's horrible. And explained. Man, vision's getting bad. All right, so adapted both for the biblical student and for the ordinary English reader. Single column edition, John Ritchie, LTD. All right, September 2021. All right, so this was recently printed. This is Thomas Newberry. This is the fellow that did the work. And this tells you about Thomas Newberry. Um, there it is. Uh, you can look it up and see. Um, here's your um, technical information here. The reference pocket edition. I had one of those. Since gave that away. The wide margin edition. Mm, I had the... Um, I had, uh, the one that I had, have, I still have it, it's upstairs, it was a gift from Pastor Rob, uh, haven't heard from him in a long time, um, and the Newberry Study Bible, and there's all the information about it, so, contents, you can also zoom in if you wish to look at the contents, books of the Bible, introduction, now this is what you should read if... This Bible interests you, the Newberry Reference Bible. Pause and look at that if you wish. Tells you about it and how it's used. Explains tenses of Hebrew words. Explains moods. And these are things that are necessary for you to understand, to truly understand some words that are used. Um, this might be interesting about that word, Len. This might show something about that word. My wife and I were um, reading, we are reading through Second Samuel right now, and uh, we often come across the words that um, are different. Uh, King James Version used in Second Samuel um, 619, 619, 2 Samuel 619, it used the words, the translators used the word flagon, um, and uh, flagon um, in that verse, in the King James Version, flagon, uh, ashisha, ashisha is the Hebrew word, and that word, there is an identical Hebrew word that has a different meaning. That different meaning is flagon. But the word that uh, ashisha that was used in that verse um, was defined as a cake of raisins, a closely knit cake of raisins. So if you look at 2 Samuel um, 6, 19, you'll see that word flagon in the King James Version. And it... Um, was translated, how would, how did the new King James translate it? Cake of raisins? The yeah, new King James translated it properly, a cake of raisins. Now, why the translators of the KJV use flagon? Well, because they saw 
that word and they assumed that it was the other word. And so the difference, you know, the modern critical text people might be wrong. Perhaps the KJV translators were right. Um, but uh, for the time being, whenever you look at that word in a Hebrew dictionary, you're going to see a cake of raisins as opposed to what flagon is. A flagon is um, like a, almost like a beer stein. Um, it, it, it's a piece of pottery, um, probably pottery, but could have been metal. But at any rate, it had a handle and a spout, and there was a flagon. And so it was assumed to have been a flagon of wine. Um, the uh, KJV translators, I find often when I think that they were wrong, I find out that they were right and modern critical text advocates were wrong. Um, so, uh, um, I don't know. But here's the first page of Genesis. This is the single column text. It's, it's paragraph format, obviously. The verses are not terribly easy to find. I mean, they're not... Eh, they're not overly difficult. But you look here. You see the bold print, um, and God created. Okay, excuse me. I'm a little shaking there. Uh, God created is bold. Now the bold words then are defined in the side columns, and they tell you the words used in bold, and you see there Elohim. Um, for God is the Hebrew Elohim. And there it is, Elohim. And God created. Over here, you have your references. Again, oh, they have it over there as Elohim as well. So this is your English. So here's your Hebrew and here is your English transliteration. So, all right. Yeah, I still remember a few things about the Hebrew. Um, so, okay. So, uh, that's the way that that works. Um, it's a really intense study system. I mean, it really is. He, this, this Newberry fellow put a lot of work into this Bible. Um, you just, it's a busy text. And this is a larger print than the one that um, Pastor Rob sent to me. So, um, so, but, uh, hey, I thank the Lord for his grace and mercy. Um, I thought that this was going to be a little bit larger. It's not very easy for me to read. In the light, the right light, I can read this just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to Second Samuel. Uh, and you'll notice at the top, um, this print has to be, let's see, I would say, I'm going to guess first, and then we'll use this next. Um, this is my uh, print uh, meter here, um, my font meter. Um, and so I'm going to say that that is a 8. That's an 8-point font. Uh, it's sans serif, so it's not, you know, the best. Not everybody uses the comfort print yet, but I'm sure they'll all get along with it if they want to sell. Boy, want to update, want to update your Bible? Put comfort print. Yeah. Hallelujah. So here's your eight-point font right there. All right, and so we put this right next to the font. And let's see, is there an I somewhere in there? Yeah, right there at the beginning. You see that I right there? Um, I, a dog. Am I a dog's head? All right. So let's see. Eight point font. Right next to that I. You just look at the size now, folks. So there it is. There's your eight point font. Yep. There's your eight point. Um, and so... 
That's your eight point font, and you see the um, red under gold or gilding. Um, and we wanted to look at that word, second Samuel. Uh, and you notice the Roman numerals, why they would put Roman numerals for the chapter number and not the verse number, but they don't do that, only the chapter number. Um, second Samuel, uh, we have uh, 12. So I don't like Roman numerals. I know them. I, I know them well. Um, I read them in my KJV on a regular basis. I'm used to them. I just don't like them. Um, I prefer uh, um, our numbering system, the Arabic numbering system that we have. Um, but it's, of course, just by virtue of uh, growing up with it. Uh, let's see, Second Samuel 8, and we wanted what? 6, Second Sam 5, 6, 19, oh, look at that. it ends right at the verse that we need, um, okay, so it says here, and he dealt among all the people, uh, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well all right, so it goes over to the next page. Um, as a woman, as men, to everyone. Here it is. A cake of bread and a good piece of flesh. And there it is, folks. A flagon of wine. Now, of wine, of course, is italicized. But if they had a flagon, they obviously had something to drink. In it. And that would, of course, have been wine because they didn't drink the water. Uh, they used the water for cleaning and everything else, uh, washing. But the water in the land of Israel, in most places, the water was not drinkable. So you had wells, well water, and if it was well water, fine. But at any rate, this flagon was filled with an assumption by the translators was wine. So... All the people departed, uh, everyone to his house. Um, so, flagon of wine. So, you see that little C there. Now, this wasn't highlighted. So, this wasn't, obviously, wasn't an issue for him. So, um, you see the little C. So, we'll and go to C. And he says, or cake of raisins. Okay, so he puts the variant in the margin that's good all right now the variant of course is based upon another hebrew word that is identical to a shisha the hebrew word here is a shisha all right he doesn't put it here because that wasn't obviously an issue for him he didn't think that you know it was as important as moab or you see all of these words that he just words and phrases that he took uh, to mean or have a great meaning in the text and they probably were um, um, uh, had textual variants attached to them so um, flagon of wine was interesting to me I noticed it because of course I'm reading from my King James version and my wife is using her new King James and so we see the variance between these two texts alone and uh, we always address them. I'll make a note in my Bible and I will put the Hebrew word or the Greek word that's associated with it. Normally when I'm reading the Greek, I can go right to my Greek New Testaments, which are there. Um, there's one. There's another one. And of course, I have my Stephanos 1550 upstairs. I got to bring that back downstairs. Um, so that's that um, there. Um, flagon of wine. Shisha, and there is again another identical word pronounced the same, spelled the same, Ashisha, yet it has a different meaning and it means a cake of raisins. So, is it a um, flagon or a cake of raisins? Um, you don't get wine out of anything but grapes, and grapes you also get raisins. Um, I don't think that it, it matters much. 
either one, but I understand why the translators may have made a mistake or why the modern critical text advocates make a mistake. So if I'm going to choose which one is right, I'm going to choose the King James Version and I'm going to accept it as flagon instead of cake of raisins. Um, again, it really doesn't make a difference. It doesn't change the meaning of the text um, at all. So uh, um, basically, David just sent everybody home. He just be inherited the entire kingdom. And so uh, that's where we're at in Second Samuel right now. Um, so I will put one ribbon there. And move that forward. Um, again, uh, you look at the uh, prophet Jeremiah. A lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of room for notes here, folks, because this becomes um, my, you know, writing room in places where there's not any translation work or anything of that nature. Uh, I'm going to take you to the New Testament. Um, you look in between the Testaments and you have your introduction to the words, the Greek words. Um, and so uh, you have tens. And this is what I appreciate about him. He was a, a Hebrew and Greek scholar. Uh, tenses, participles, other signs. Um, and, uh, here your the outline or plan, so, of, of the English Greek Testament is exceedingly simple. Okay, so he gives you what he considers a simple outline. Um, it's definitely in depth. Not as simple as he might have thought it to be, but certainly, um, this is great. Um, I'm going to enjoy looking at this for a little while. And then, uh, yep. And then here's a chart. And you could zoom in and turn your phone sideways. Um, but let's see. I'll turn the Bible this way for you. Then you get the whole shot of that chart. And you can look at that. Um, Greek and Hebrew equivalents, um, and then, uh, the New Testament one here, I'll pull this one over here, and I'll put that there, because I want to look at that later, introduction, more introduction to the New Testament, um, he really gets deep, um, baptism, baptisma, um, um, and he gives you all this information about baptism, which is good. Uh, fourfold aspect of the gospel. Child, destroy, no um, power. These are words that he believed were important words that um, needed to be addressed. Um, you can look at the, all of that. Um, this is amazing. Look at this stuff, Lynn. you got to see this. This is sick. Wow. And then there's the Gospel of Matthew. All right, so um, again, same as the Hebrew. You'll see the Greek over here, and then you'll see um, the English transliteration over here. Um, amazing. This is such a nice Bible. Um I didn't use it as much as um, I probably could have or maybe should have, but um, with all the different uh, Bibles that I have, I do use them, um, and particularly for um, word studies, this is an excellent Bible, but it's not exhaustive. These are words that he uh, chose, thought that they were words that should be expounded upon, and so... This would be considered, it's not considered a lay flat binding, but it will, once it's used, lay flat. This leather will soften up with use. And, uh, yeah. 
Then in the back, he has this. Um, this is called the Living Offerings. Let's see, it's a chart that deals with the offerings um, of the Old Testament. So let's look at the very first map, very first chart, which is this one. History, history it says, is his story. And then you'll see here the purpose of the ages. To the dispensation of the fullness of times from before the foundation of the world. To the dispensation of the fullness of times. Um, and then you have innocence, conscience, government, promise, the law, church, and the kingdom. Ah, this is dispensational. Ah, yeah. Not for me, folks. I'm not, not, I, listen, I honestly believe that there are two dispensations in Scripture. A dispensation is a period of time in which God deals with his people. Okay, so there are two different dispensations in Scripture. There's the dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace, period. My um, understanding, my belief, that's where I stand. Um, I shall not be moved. Um, I don't accept this as um, a doctrinally sound position, but I don't say that it's heresy either. Um, so to be dispensational, eh, some Baptists make a big deal out of it. I don't, I just, I know that there are two dispensations, the dispensation of law. That's a nice picture, by the way, as an artist, I love looking at the artwork, um, these older Bibles, uh, that Dake annotated reference Bible, he's got stuff like this in the back only. That was his drawings. Dake was a little bitty artist himself. Um, and uh, that's beautiful. The Temple Mount and everything that looks amazing. If it looked anything like that, boy, that's absolutely amazing. Um, <clears throat> and then you have uh, Telling Heaven's Poet. Te this says Telim. Oh, okay. Telim. That's Heaven's Poetry. And then you go through the Psalms, the different. Um, portions of the Psalms and breaks it up and shows you a different thing. Unlocking the treasure chest, seven parables of the kingdom. There's so many different things in here that you would be um, studying for days certain of these things. And you have to go through the references. And if you look here, like Paul's pattern prayers. And so um, in 1 Corinthians 1, 4 through 8, he has a pattern prayer, you know. Um, at least this is the way um, Mr. Newberry set it up. Stir up your gift. The seven churches of Revelation. I saw a teaching on this um, once many, many years ago. I'd like to find it and give that pastor um, the uh, credit that he was due because he introduced it to me. So I would give him the credit, though I'm sure he wasn't the first person to teach or believe that, but he taught something from the book of Revelation that was interesting. And I want to find it. i got to talk to his son. Uh, here we go, a couple of end maps. Um, and there's, of course, Paul's journeys. Um, Paul's journeys and others as well. Uh, the journey of the Israelites. Oh, this is the journeys of the Israelites. This is in Paul's journeys. Uh, the spies. Okay, this is Old Testament. So that's good. Um, tribal territories. Uh, this, is, um, this is something here. Wow, what a work this is. Can you imagine the work that went into putting this together? Look at this. This is amazing. So this is, uh, it, has a, it has a tool of line all the way around the perimeter, which would be equivalent to the book block. So that line um, is the size of your yap. So it doesn't have um, a yap really to speak of. Um, but I love the, the grain, um, the look of this leather. Um, it really is um, uh, 
So that's my son Danny, uh, brother Danny. So I got to get to see him. I got to go to my rental property. But I wanted to show you this uh, Newberry Reference Bible. So, hey, this video is going to be a lot longer than I had anticipated. But I thought I would show you. Um, I thought it was going to be a quick look, but it turned out to be a lengthened look. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for the Newberry Reference Bible. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Jesus loves you, and I love you, and I hope and pray that you have a great rest of your day. In Jesus' name.